I actually have something serious to talk to you about. Arroz con pollo? <laughs> no. I was going to ask you, um, do you feel that you're being left behind with social media's new, um, like how TikTok has exploded and, and that if you post a photo up, it doesn't get any likes because... It's not moving. Exactly. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I think... I I've, feel older than ever. I think I've been there. I think it's a problem. I think I've been there because, you know, I think I put... I'm that guy that... that oh, my goodness. So I'm that guy that I feel that um, I, I put up that epic, powerful photo and I get two likes on it, as it is. <laughs> and I think more now that we've exploded to the world of moving is more important than still yeah i think people want to see two seconds of something funny rather than 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 be able to stare at something beautiful yeah yeah it's really sad i i sat with my daughter yesterday to try to understand like tiktok a little bit more because she's on it all the time mm -hmm. and so we went through my feed and then we went through her feed to see what the algorithm is giving us and hers is mostly people dancing and having a good time right and then mine is like every other one is like I'm a photographer, yeah. and here's a picture I've taken. Yes, I hate that one. And that's another thing that I don't understand about this whole craze is it's it's you have to repeat what some, someone else has already done. Yes, 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 yes. Like even even the influencers influencers of TikTok are TikTok repeaters. Yeah. Everyone figures out, oh, that's the new craze. I'm going to do that now. Yeah, and I think it's like a song kind of goes viral, so everyone uses the song mm -hmm. for their thing. Everyone's doing the same joke. Right. You and put your spin on it. The best things is when they use songs that they don't realize are saying really bad things. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's yeah. the best. Like, there's a Russian song that's being used, and then the the typical hip-hop songs that they're talking about, you know, bad things, But and, and the woman is trying to show how positive she's moving. I'm like, oh. ma'am, the song is <laughs> degrading women and saying bad things about them. Wrong song. Oh, I understand. Wrong song, but it's hip. It's 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 what's happening. So they they go right to that. So yes, I do feel like I'm standing alone in my corner where the rest of the social media is moving away. Yeah, for the first time, because because mm -hmm. um, I feel like I don't have the energy to like try to do the thing that's hot, right? right. And I would feel it's I don't know. I feel like people people are just trying so hard to be funny. Most people, I think most regular people, are not funny. No, no. They're funny by accident. Yeah. I think you, you could be funny by accident, and, and that's that's the best <laughs> kind of funny. Not the funny that I'm trying to be funny. Yeah. And, I, and that's, the, that's the thing. I think my, my best videos in the last few months have been where I put PJ repeating the, the dog trends. Oh, that's fun. And, and you know, so, so I'm guilty of r repeating the trend, but I usually do it with PJ, and I think... People love those videos, and I think that's weird. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't know. People love dogs, so right. that's its own thing. But do you ever see yourself uh, like doing the dance in front of or doing any of that? Stuff? Well, multiple sclerosis has prevented me from doing it. <laughs> well, not, I, maybe I, not I, the I, dance, no, but maybe I, the, the uh, for us, it's the trend. I'm a photographer, and here's a photo I've taken. I have, in my mind, recorded that a thousand times, but my brain and ego are like, if you push record, yeah, you might as well hang it up, bro. <laughs> That's what I mean. And so this is an interesting thing because um, I think a lot of people now are deciding... Let's talk if you're like a business or if you're trying to get your work out there. If you're resistant a lot, you're going to lose against mm -hmm. the companies that are the ones showing this stuff. So, for example, I've been showing more stories, which I, I think I can deal with. That's almost like posting. Right. You, could, you can put a photo up on your story, <laughs> which is like stories are so like three years yeah, ago. like a story. <laughs> you, need, you mean reels, reels. <laughs> son? I know. So... I'm so behind that, um, you know, bottom level is putting a Instagram post up. The next level is story, which is more people are watching stories mm -hmm. than your, your photo. And then now you're supposed to be making reels. It was just a funnier uh, take off from that. People from TikTok are now becoming... Flip it this way. Sorry. Just so that you don't pick up my voice. So, so people are, are, are now becoming uh, TikTok famous and are putting their TikToks on YouTube. Oh yeah, and yeah. you're seeing these these skinny YouTube oh, videos, man. And I'm like, and and you know what? They get millions and millions of views. So who am I to sit there and say that they're I doing know. something wrong? You know? I know, I know. It's just what it is. Like one of my favorite. There is one guy that I do watch. His name is like Hood Nature or something like that. And he's like a, a young black man who, um, 
gives you like yo that guy th- this animal kills people he's got he's got black air force power <laughs> like you know he's hilarious and and i i'm like okay i get it people yeah. like this stuff i like this stuff but why is it on YouTube? You yeah, know? I know. You it's know what? Bit, it's making him money, so I'm not. I'm not. You know, I got what 300 followers. So I think, yeah, I don't think YouTube has figured out how to deal with the vertical. You know, like people. Some people think they're ruining their channel because they have like full content, but more people want to see reels. Right. But if you post a reel, it shows up as your like as a mm, video. Mm, no. Well, it, it, they have the whole shorts now. Oh, they they call them shorts. They're yeah. shorts now. This where how, this is how out of it I am. Yeah. So now on YouTube, you could post a short, and those will get a million trillion views, while First, your real videos get yeah. four. See, that's what I mean. And let's let's talk about it as photographers. From the point of photography, if you're a wedding photographer or portrait, where do you post? Like, where should you post? That's the hard thing because a lot of these short posts are for uh, exploiting your your gifts and your skills, and and people are doing that by Again, repeating a trend. I'm a photographer. This is something I shot. Yeah. Or one that I used where you line up like 20 of your shots to the oh, beat. Oh, I've seen do, that. Do, 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 yes, do, do, yes. Do. And I've used that one. And you know what? I actually enjoyed that one because even though it's it's a popular trend, it did put my work out there. Yeah. And, you know, the, the range that I can shoot. But where does that fit in YouTube, though? That's back to Instagram Reels and or TikTok. But I'm talking if clients were looking at you, though, do you think that, you know, since let's pretend that younger wedding clients are on TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say mm-hmm. that that's where they're getting their information. And most of the stuff they watch is like a popular song. So do you think there's a strategy where with your photography, you could use what the trends are, you know, like whatever the joke is, you're show you know, like you're trying to show the yeah. problem with that great idea instant marketing yeah marketing marketing In, instant marketing but the problem with that is how long before it's no longer trendy yeah I know. how long before that that becomes oh that one again yeah you're right so then, so you can't put your work on something that is well i guess you could treat it as a commercial right you, you have a commercial off for a few months and then you film a new commercial do you take that previous short down or do you leave it up there for the views i mean it's just hard it's something you have to think about i think like we said i feel like it's leaving me behind Mm -hmm. and i almost want to let it i think i've i've jumped on the let it go wagon myself because i i I can't do it it's exhausting i mean physically i am not able to do dances no it's videoing it's definitely recording and lighting and so to me no one wants to hear me go this is my stuff look (laughs) you know it's hard i think we now need to reinvent ourselves somewhere else. TikTok I, is not for us. We're not. I know. And and here's the thing: like, how many clients in your profession for what you're shooting are going to, you know? Because as we've gotten older, parents are allowing their children to have more say in their lives mm-hmm. and what they do, as opposed to when we were growing up. My mom said, "Do it." That's what I did. Yeah, yeah. So now, how many of these parents with with the money to hire you are going to be saying, "Hey, you know, baby." Do you like this photographer? Do you like how he works on TikTok? Is that going to be important? I as wonder part? in many years from now, like the that the social media presence for the kid or the senior, you know. And yeah, portraits. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's going to be so important to, that the kid has a say in it now. Does he have to go and approve the photographer? And if he does, are you not TikTok cool enough for him? Yeah, that's interesting, you know, because think about Instagram and in its infancy. You mm-hmm. had to have like a good spread to show all your work it wasn't what it is now which is like video 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 you had a feed that like all the colors melded together it was a step down from 500 picks Totally, totally. Remember 500 picks yeah yeah it's still out there you always mention 500 i hate once you marry 500 picks what are your what are your thoughts on um photographers or or i guess the topic that i'm trying to bring up here is like showing people everything behind the scenes, settings, what you did, how it was edited, here's the final. Um, you know, I love seeing that stuff, but do you think that you would want to show everything? Do you think that's, that there's there's something special about a mystery of how, yo, what lens did you use? I, yo, what, what, what light did you use? Yo, you know what I mean? I could tell people what lens and what light, but it's not gonna, it maybe helps a little bit. You know what I mean? Here's the thing, who's it for? average person watching that 
that uh, swiping left, right, and seeing what that person yes, did, yes, yes. and and really digging it is a photographer. Yeah, you're right. You're not aiming that at a client. Yeah, client yeah. could care less. Here, here's my money. Make me look amazing. Okay, so so get, get client out of the way. Like, do you think that there should be secrets? I guess is my there, question. There definitely should be secrets. Why? Why? Listen, you could tell them. In this situation, you want to make sure your client is facing against the sun or with the sun. Mm-hmm. Make sure the windows are blocked. Whatever. Yeah. But but when it comes down to you physically showing them step by step how you make your magic, just just send them your next paycheck. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is a lot of photographers are giving away. I don't want to say their secrets because there really is no secret. It's lighting. It's, no. You know, it's stuff we could learn. Mm-hmm. But. I feel like some people don't want to do the legwork to what learn. It is. Yeah, go, let's go to YouTube. See how it's done. See, people are like, "What camera was this?" I get it all the time, and and sometimes I don't put what camera it is on purpose mm-hmm. just to annoy people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but people want to know what what lens was this, right? And I I am guilty of checking too when I like someone's awesome headshot. I'm mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god, what was this?" And if nothing is there, I'm a little disappointed. I will admit, and I love seeing behind the scenes because I learn from them. But sometimes people give you the kitchen sink. You yeah, know? yeah. No, I, I have a, I have a problem with. I don't have a problem because I like watching the setup. Me too. I love. I'm but, just throwing but, it out there, like so to. But to me, is like, is like, are you now, are you now uh, minimizing what you do because you're letting everyone do it? Yeah. No, it's like this. Like, here's a thing. This a thing to think about. Just because I could teach you how to throw a curveball doesn't mean you'll be able to throw a curveball. Mm-hmm. Or will you throw it better than I do? Mm-hmm. You know, so that's the whole thing. Like, yeah, you could put this information out there, but if you don't have a talent, if you don't have a drive, if because sometimes drive over overrides talent. If you don't have either of those two, you're still not going to be a good photographer. So you're yeah. So you're saying you could give them the lens, the camera, set the light up for them, and mm. say go, and they'll they'll take a picture of someone's toe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whoops. Oh, <laughs> look at that toe though. <laughs> You Harry, know, do we need to talk about something? <laughs> here, here's here. I'll give you guys a little bit of behind the scenes. For example, moving a light just about six inches closer to a person will completely change the look. Mm-hmm. I've seen people use a, a beauty dish the right way. Mm-hmm. Like if you watch Lindsay Adler, who does fashion photography, quote. And by the way, when you sometimes tell people what the right way is, they'll argue that it's like a choice. Mm-hmm. But really, a beauty dish has to be close to the person or it looks like a mm. street lamp. Right. So uh, a beauty dish is supposed to be about 12 inches right uh, at above, a camera. Above 45 degree angle. Totally, right? Yeah. So I watch people doing tutorials where the beauty dish is three feet away. Mm-hmm. And maybe they want to go for that street lamp look, but now someone is learning that. They're learning the wrong way. You right. Know? In those videos you've seen, and do they then show you a photo where you know deep down inside they moved that dish closer? No, no. I think they show you the bad photo. Oh, and well, then, good for them. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then people... Yeah, you're right. That would be funny if they lied to them. But the sad thing about that is then when someone goes and does a job, they you watch that YouTube video, that tutorial, and they, they'll do, redo that bad lesson. Mm-hmm. It's more important that you get a dummy or a... a some sort of friend right. and move the a dummy friend <laughs> or a dumb friend <laughs> Hello. and move the beauty dish mm-hmm. different places and you decide what you want right because you might like the street light look you might that's what you're going for and that's you know? what you're selling that's my yeah. point yeah. is yeah. is don't set up the light how it is in the tutorial set it up how you like you know what the light is going to do mm-hmm. you know if you feather it if you move it closer if it's up higher if put it's a overhead. little gel on it you know <laughs> oh my <laughs> Anyway, I think it's an interesting discussion that I think there should be secrets. And there was one photographer, I think it was Danny Diamond, who does beautiful portraits. I love that name. Danny Diamond. He's awesome. And I think early on, he's uh, people are like, what lens is this? What? Uh, he's like, go figure it out. <laughs> go figure it out. I think he's more open now, but mm. I love that he used to say that. For some people, I think they need to hear... Right, because you need to figure out what's going to be your favorite lens in life. Yeah. Because everyone has a favorite lens. And sometimes you can't afford that favorite lens. But either way, you need to sit there and start taking the photo of that woman, of that guy, of that couple, of that senior. Mm-hmm. And then you realize, you know what? I love the way this looks. I love. like I yeah. love the way this looks. This, this, this 50 looks so much better than this 35. Or this 85, it looks so much better than this 135. No one ever said that. Yeah. <laughs> 135 is the magic melter. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you need to do. You need to realize that you can learn from people, 
but then you need to translate it for yourself. Absolutely. Because absolutely. whatever someone teaches you, they're teaching you fundamentals and 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 ins and outs and and you know rules. But rules are meant to be modified. Yeah. In photography, you don't want to break rules. You want to modify them to yourself. You could even break them if you want. Do it yourself. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know. But you know, like I said, rules are third. That doesn't have to be. No, a not problem. at all. But again, someone will tell you that's the right way to do it. And you, and you'll get great photos that way, but you could also get photos of the person that's a little more centered than than rules of third. You yeah, know? yeah. It and all depends. It, you, it, experience is is everything. Remember all the creative live classes we watch and we mm -hmm. watch Zach Arias and you and I used to practice and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. I would go on jobs and still not see that the overhead pot light mm -hmm. was casting a shadow on the person. It only took many jobs of looking at the photos and being like, why Why is there a, a shadow over here if my light is over here? Right. You know, no class can teach you. Experience. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, man, I was supposed to overpower that light and mm -hmm. kill the ambient. Meanwhile, I'm trying to like, I was following the rules, which is <laughs> exactly. get the ambient light. Mm -hmm. But I didn't notice the, the spotlight on a person. And that stuff takes so much practice, you know. So I don't think anyone should give up the kitchen sink anymore. I, but I do believe there should still be people out there teaching you. Oh, totally. Always be teaching. Always always give examples. But always caveat it with, hey, this is how I do it. Go out there, practice it, figure out how it feels good and works better for you. Totally, totally. <laughs> so every time I come over to Omar's house to, to, to do a, a, our, our little thing here, I always try to figure out what's for dinner here. <laughs> or, You're always invited. Or, you know, how can I drag him out to eat something? Mm -hmm. There's a place that I like that's in the area. It's 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 a Irish pub, mm -hmm. which has some really old-fashioned Irish food. But I'm just a fan of their wings, to be honest with you. Mm. You know, I love their wings and their burgers. Burgers are great. They have a they... burger there that, um, go ahead, tell, talk about the burger we usually order. It's also. called the Dublin. Mm. And it's it, great. It, and it comes on an English muffin. <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. And, you know, you, your choices of the normals, the onions, pickles, and stuff like that. But you could also add to it. Like, you throw an egg on it or whatever. And you always do that. I don't know why you do the egg, man. I love a fried I know, egg but on like a cholesterol, burger. Okay. Oh, I'm dying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die with a smile. You know, my cholesterol's been really good, so this is why I, I, I've been throwing eggs on everything lately. Um, so if you had your choice of a perfect burger, what would you put on it? Toppings-wise? Yes. First of all, oh, man. We, we'll, we'll go with the toppings first, and then we'll touch on the bun, all right? Because a bad bun ruins okay. the burger. All right. Yeah, I agree. All right. So my perfect burger is a potato bun, mm -hmm. so not any like kind of Kaiser-heavy bun. Right. It's a very – because the meat is most important. And then cheddar cheese, and then very, very plain American sort of uh, pickles, maybe red onion – with a little lettuce and tomatoes. Yes, yes. They're very simple and to the point. To me, I agree with everything. I think a potato bun is an un underrated bun. Absolutely. The hot dog with a potato bun, oh, delicious. Awesome. And uh, a hamburger with a potato bun, exactly. It doesn't take away from the flavor. It adds to it. Yeah. And I agree with you. It has to have red onions for me because red onions give you a bite. Right. Yeah, because once you do the grilled onions, that's a completely... Yeah. You want to go Swiss cheese, I right, think. Right, right. You want to be mushy with that. Yeah, yeah. You so I think, think Swiss and mushrooms with grilled onions, that's that kind of burger. Right. To me, if we're going al fresco burger... <laughs> yes. We, go we, go with the... If you're going to throw lettuce, tomato, you have the red onions and some pickles the, to contrast mm. and bite. Yeah, that's great. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's go. Ke ketchup, Good night, everybody. Ke ketchup is optional, but it, it is appreciated. You know, mustard, yeah. maybe. Some people get freaky about that. You know, I'm freaky about that. I'm not a mustard person. Yeah, how about a mayo? Would you go mayo? Mayo, yes. Is it a must or a, a, an okayness? It's not a must. Ketchup is a must, but mayo can be on the bread, but very light. Right. Almost nothing. Like Not like still... Burger King when you whap oh, it on Oh, my there. God. It's like completely white. Yeah. yeah. You know, Mo and I worked in Burger King. Right. And you had to make the bun look white with the mayonnaise. It was my amazing. My favorite part of working in Burger King was uh, in I worked breakfast. I had to crack like 80 eggs. Oh, yes. And, then... and and I got so good that I learned how to crack with one hand. So I would crack with my left hand and mm. then throw the shell in my left and throw that in the garbage. So I was like a machine. So while, while Omar Which was Which would crack... be an awesome TikTok, by it the way. It would be, right? <laughs> while Omar was cracking eggs, we were the opening crew for a while and, on the weekends. Yes. And what he would... While he cracked a million eggs, I would be out there lighting broilers. I would be out there turning oh. the fryers on. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was nothing better than the click, yeah, click, click, click. click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the like, flame broiler that they had, boy, that was a big barbecue. We were 15, 16 years old, 17, and we still remember that yeah. the sound. The yeah. t- and, and we were trusted to open up the store by ourselves. It was really cool. The, everything that was that was funny about uh, Burger King was like everything was in bulk. So do you remember right, the pickles? Yes, the big buckets of pickles it was a pup, it was a bucket it, of it was if you think of a home depot five gallon bucket yes it was probably more than five gallons but uh yeah no there were five gallon buckets of pickle yeah yeah oh we still use those pickles buckets of pick a pickle yeah, so buckets. you had to you had to use the bucket to refill the bin for the day and right. it's just like all right and then it was bucket o mayo it was like <laughs> and then the, like tons of tomatoes oh man the, the tomatoes, tomatoes had to be cut fresh well, right? it was a box of tomatoes that we had to slice through the slicer every morning shoo, shoo, shoo. so when you were done with the eggs you would go out front and then i would go in the back and start slicing tomatoes it's so oh. funny and, and i feel you know burger king everything was pretty fresh You're right. like like I, I had respect for how they did things the only thing was the french fries you had to put half oil and half lard do you remember you shortening had- Shortening, they yes, called it. Yes, they called it shortening. We knew what it was. <laughs> it was, was Olardo. <laughs> On the back, it said Olardo. You know and what, though? It was good fries. The fries were good. Yeah, yeah they yeah. weren't McDonald's quality. Nah. But they were good. And I you know, I think the I always enjoyed everything from Burger King. And I went to Burger King like a month ago for the first time in a million years just to have a Whopper with and? no cheese. And I was actually very proud of it. Okay. And I actually probably will get another one sometime soon now that I just thought about it. <laughs> No, you know what? It, it all depends who's making it, right? I used to be proud that we could run that whole place as like 15-year-old, you know, Steve on register, for instance, Steve on register, you, you know, running around making food. And there were like three or four guys and we could get right. the lunch crowd right. out of there. Yeah, it was it was hectic, It was, but it was a machine. It was a machine. Well-oiled machine. And that all goes back to training, right? Yeah. We were properly trained. They gave away the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. But in this case, it was important to be oh, by so the rules. Funny. Oh, man. I don't know if you or you do remember this, but I'll tell everyone. There was a DEF CON level. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Little explain fun. DEF CON. So it, it wasn't called DEF CON, but we called it DEF CON. <laughs> um, so there was different levels of alert. So we had to have certain if it was on level one we didn't have to have any sandwiches stage or pre yeah there was no pre-stock like right. you didn't have to make a whopper that sat there if we were at level two you would have one of each thing one of a whopper and a cheeseburger up and then as you got higher the more amount of food you'd have to have have ready ready already so pre-made. that the, the expediter can grab it so bag. by the time you hit level eight or whatever the, the max I think level it was five i think yeah so when you hit level four you already were just blindly making the normal stuff and then adapting to anything because Burger King gives you the yes. the no pickle, the no onion. And the secret of Burger King is if you ask for something that's special, like no mayo. Or it's extra, freshly it's, made. It's freshly made. Yes. So the, the trick was always to be like, uh, no mayo. Yeah. And then you're like, can I have some packets of mayo? Can I have mayo on a side? <laughs> Free. Popeye's though makes a good sandwich. Popeye makes a great sandwich, yes. and and they make great chicken when it's fresh. Yeah, it has to be fresh. Yeah. But they have a good sauce on there. A good sauce. I did, was doing. So, a, did you have the spicy? Are you talking about the regular one or the spicy one? Um, I had the regular one. It was funny. It was at a mitzvah, and they brought Popeye's in for mm. it, mitzvahs are great because at the end of the night they give you like a parting snack. It's mm. usually like a cookie or some kind of cool donut or something. This family had chick like um, Popeye's. Right. And I'm like, the guy's like, you want one of these? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, come on. <laughs> He's like, go ahead, take it, take it, take it. You want and it? And I took it and I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. They, they're they very good sandwiches. Very good. And I, 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 I laughed it off because when they first introduced the spicy chicken sandwich, um, you couldn't find one. Oh, yeah, that was when they were crazed. You couldn't find one. You had to, like, even... God bless their hearts. They would write in their broken English. On the window. No chicken sandwich. <laughs> you know, and it was like three different places I went to go try that same day. And I posted on Instagram. Like, I can't believe that three different restaurants selling chicken sandwiches can't spell chicken sandwich. Oh, my gosh. And they were all out. But anyway, so then everyone had to do it. Wendy's, Burger King yeah, has yeah. one. That was one. all the Chick-fil-A pickle thing. Yeah, but I think, yeah, definitely when I finally got my hands on it, it, it lived up to the hype. And it's hard to do for a sandwich that was sold out for two months in a row, you know. It's so it, funny. I'm a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it comes down to. All right, we got to go to uh, say goodbye. All right. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, be good.